Welcome to the weekly, in a week where one reporter in the UK was ready to answer the tough questions, wherever they came from. Minister David Cameron was talking about... Oh, I'm really sorry, that's my son arriving. Really? Sorry, really embarrassed, sorry. sorry. Hold on one second. Oh, can I sorry. Have two biscuits? Um, yes, you can have two biscuits. Oh, 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 oh. It's only July and while 2020 has already been a long year, recently it seemed like we were finally starting to see some light at the end of the COVID tunnel. But yesterday, for many Victorians, that light faded as the state recorded its biggest surge in coronavirus cases and Premier Daniel Andrews put Melbourne back into lockdown. No one wanted to be in this position. This is not over. It is not something you can pretend and, and wish away. Those venues that had been cautiously opening up will have to go back to take away, take away service only. As a Victorian, I can say this is a shit sandwich. Shit sandwich that we now have to get takeaway. As a result, New South Wales and Victoria took the extraordinary step of closing their border. This is quite historic. The last time the New South Wales-Victoria border was closed was 101 years ago. Closing the border is not just a dramatic decision politically. It's also an enormous practical challenge to police a border that's thousands of kilometres long. We know there are four primary road crossings, 33 bridges, uh, two waterway crossings and multiple smaller roads. There are 11 local government areas, five police districts. And a partridge with COVID-19. With the deadline looming, we saw the dramatic breaking news of the last train into Sydney, while the mayors of border towns Albury and Wodonga met on the border and, judging by their outfits, solved a murder. While in Victoria itself, the second wave we'd all been warned about seemed to crash in Melbourne. Well, Australia's first hard lockdown is underway tonight, with three 3,000 people confined to their public housing estates under 24-7 police enforcement. With at least 27 new cases of COVID-19 confirmed in nine of Melbourne's public housing towers, health officials are coming down hard. It's been a scary time for the members of this vulnerable community. I'm not talking about the project. So Deputy Chief Medical Officer Paul Kelly, not that Paul Kelly, chose his words carefully. They are vertical cruise ships in a way. Vertical cruise ships? So if we get them to New South Wales, the people will be allowed out. To keep people in the towers calm through the crisis, the authorities reportedly decided to pipe in this relaxing message, encouraging everyone to get tested for corona. You test only tests for coronavirus. It does not test for anything else. The more people who get tested, the quicker we can release you from your home. Ah, nothing says no need to be alarmed like commandeering an alarm. It was a bad situation with no easy answers. Faced with an enormously difficult task, the Victorian government showed signs of trying to help those affected. But its bedside manner needed a lot of work. I've had no contact so far. Food has been dropped off in front of um, the building, um, you know, to Muslim communities with pork in it. Parents are calling us saying, you know, there's no diapers for their children. To rub salt into the wounds, many claim they've been provided with out-of-date food. Oh, my God, this is by a 24. 4th of April 2019. Shockingly, even the salt being rubbed into their wounds was past its use-by date. But the community rallied and we saw heartwarming images of people coming together to help those trapped inside their own homes. Only the Today Show was brave enough to broadcast someone saying that these people have got it too good. We've seen food being delivered there. The fact is that a lot of them are there drug There are 3,000 people, well. Pauline. Why are they getting paid extra money? Um, for what? They're not leaving the premises. A lot of these people are from non-English speaking backgrounds. Probably English is their second language. If they're from war-torn countries, which some of these people are, they know what it's like to be in tough conditions. Do you have a heart, Pauline? Does Pauline have a heart? Well, while we're at it, we may as well go full Today Show Wizard of Oz. Since presenter Brooke Boney already showed she has courage... I felt completely heartbroken. I grew up in Housing Commission and to me, I was thinking about all of those kids sitting at home watching, or all of those people trapped in their apartments watching and thinking, this is what Australia thinks of us. And I wondered if anyone running the Today Show has a brain. After originally putting Hanson's clip on social media with the caption, Pauline Hanson has made a number of controversial comments. What do you think? Later that day, the Today Show deleted that tweet and announced it was kicking Pauline off the show. But Pauline was only on the Today Show in the first place because she quit her last brekkie TV gig after Christchurch when Koshy suspected she might be too racist for Sunrise, which is a hell of a sentence. Do you in uh, any way feel hold complicit hold on. with this atrocity? You... So the Today Show brought her in to have free kick after free kick after free kick, which are then shared on social media to stoke outrage, which then gets written up as news, fueling more outrage. Also, the Today Show could win its little ratings war 
which it didn't. I guess racism is a lot like a virus. When you had a chance to lock down hard, you didn't, so it's too late to distance yourself now. While nightclub reopenings had Queenslanders dancing like nobody was watching, or more importantly, social distancing, Victorians were wondering how this corona surge could happen in their progressive state, with all its coffee and art and free love. And about that... There are claims this morning that guards patrolling the halls of quarantine hotels slept with returning travellers. Guys, that wasn't what we meant when we said we need to get on top of this virus. You'd think this would have come up in basic training. About that training... George is a security guard that has worked at a quarantine hotel in Melbourne for the last three months. He tells me he received just five minutes of training before he was put on the job. How much training did you get? Five minutes, yeah. Well, when I first worked at McDonald's, they only gave me five minutes of training on the fry vat. That said, I did know not to put my dick in it. I just hope those guards had protection. Oh, about that. There are also allegations that those doing the training weren't trained themselves and a lack of PPE, with security guards given just one glove and one mask for the entire day. Unless the one glove is large enough to fit their whole body in it, that does feel inadequate. While the situation is a disaster for Premier Daniel Andrews, who launched a judicial inquiry, it's been a dream run for Australia's Health Minister Greg Hunt, who launched himself into every show he could find, armed with a single sentence. We would encourage the Victorian authorities to throw the book at them. Throw the book at them. Throw the book at them. Throw the book. Then Victoria should show, uh, throw the book at them. Oh, so close, Greg. Maybe he would have known a second sentence if he didn't throw all his books away. On Thursday, a year after the arrest and subsequent death in custody of convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, his alleged accomplice, Ghislaine Maxwell, was finally behind bars. Jeffrey Epstein's former girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, has been arrested and charged by the FBI with trafficking and grooming underage girls. Ghislaine Maxwell, the most wanted woman in the world, Epstein's number one co-conspirator finally arrested after a year on the run. As the news broke of her arrest, there was one man who the world knew would be sweating, if he was capable of sweating, Prince Andrew. Pressure is mounting on Prince Andrew to speak to America's FBI after his friend Ghislaine Maxwell was arrested. Virginia Roberts alleges that age 17 she was trafficked to London by the convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein and that that night, shortly after this picture was taken, she had sex with Prince Andrew. Ghislaine Maxwell is seen in the background of a now infamous photo in London. The photo is a terrible look for Andrew, but he has done his best to distance the palace from any connection to a notorious sex offender, which means this photo was an even worse look. Inside Buckingham Palace, Ghislaine Maxwell sitting on the Queen's throne alongside Kevin Spacey. Come on, Andrew, that's your mum's best chair. But it goes to show two things. One, the extent and influence of this criminal enterprise. And two, that unlike Jeffrey, the photos just don't go away. And it's not just Prince Andrew. There's billionaire rocket pimp Elon Musk, Donald Trump, Michael Bolton, good to see him again, Donald Trump, Mick Jagger, Rupert Murdoch, which weirdly hasn't got much press at all. A very compromising photo of Chelsea Clinton with both Ghislaine Maxwell and Bill Clinton. There's Donald Trump, Oh, and there's Naomi. I thought you had better taste. Well, this'll do irreparable damage to Harvey Weinstein's sparkling reputation. And then, of course, there's Donald, Don Don, D-Bag and D-Diddy. Wow, Ghislaine could have the dirt on some very big names. I hope she's being kept somewhere safe. The 58-year-old faces life behind bars in the same Manhattan jail where Epstein died. Ah, well, she will be missed. The United States celebrated its Independence Day this week, a holiday commemorating the time Bill Pullman saved the world from aliens. But unfortunately, the whole violent, dangerous pandemic thing really put a dampener on festivities. A 4th of July like no other. Coronavirus cases surging across the country. Even a small family gathering is a bad idea this 4th of July because the number of new coronavirus infections keep climbing. The mood was so dark in the States that even the White House's own Bruno Mars Tribute Act was somehow deeply depressing. Uptown funk you up. Uptown funk you up. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, I like this. Let's keep it going. Let's not. But if you think a mere deadly pandemic is going to stop America being itself, think again. Because along with obesity and gun crime, there's one American tradition that will never be tamed. And we are underway. The 2020 men's division 
of the Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Contest. Yes, it's the World Hot Dog Eating Championships, now with COVID safety measures, including social distancing, plexiglass, and masks for anyone needing to shield themselves from the blinding luster of true athleticism. And when America needed a hero, one man stepped up to the plate and ate everything on it. And that man was the Michael Jordan of Downing Wieners, Joey Chestnut. Joey Chestnut is back! Joey Chestnut! George fired up and I can understand why. Crazy. This is some eating. And indeed it was, as Joey, an icon of the Major League Eating Circuit, which is a real thing, set a world record for eating 75 hot dogs in 10 minutes. Congratulations, Joey, and thank God for the new social distancing measures. Otherwise, that could have been really unhealthy. And that's the week.